Guys, welcome back. My featured guest this morning is a name that I would have called covering Olympic Games for over the last uh, two decades or so. And uh, I, over the years, I did not know that she had Trini heritage, Trinbigo heritage. If you've been following news this week, um, yeah, she's been in and around the news. She is in town. Her name is Lauren Williams. She's a four-time Olympian and a three-time Olympic medalist and she's a bit of a historian guys she, she, she's made history uh, as an American woman and we're going to talk to her chat with her and most importantly put her in the kitchen because I understand that she can cook I can cook <laughs> <laughs> you're not stranger to the kitchen by any means and not by any means not by any means I, you know and strangely enough athletes that's, that, that's trained from athletes most athletes they don't have time to cook, Lauren. They, they, yeah. they, they, they're so busy training, out of training, eating right. They don't have time to cook. Where do you find time to cook? Well, cooking is very important because you need proper nutrition to be a good athlete. And for me, I never use any supplements. So no powders, no pills, no vitamins. I depend solely on the food. And that comes from my upbringing. Like you said, my father was born in Tobago. A lot of my family is raised in Trinidad. And they are cooking people. Everybody in the family is a great cook. And my dad even had a restaurant as I was growing up. So cooking has always been a really big part of my life, really ingrained in me. And I am believing the importance of getting the nutrition from the food instead of that stuff that comes from the right. lab. So over your career, you've, you've never done any sort of pills or... Nope. No, no vitamins. No, no vitamins. None of that. Serious. I feel like, you know, if you need vitamin this, you get it from broccoli. If you need vitamin <laughs> that, you get it from this. If you need protein, eat some meat. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Cool. Oh, those powders, what do they do? Where do they come from? How do they make them? Nah. You, you know, you're not putting that in, yeah. in your system. I need yeah. to know the origin of the thing. I'm putting it in my mouth. So, so, so glad to have you here. Um, I did not know, so you're now telling me that your father, who is past, he's, mm -hmm. he's past, but you you have your father originated. You were, were you born in Tobago? I was not born in Tobago. You were born in, you were born in the U.S.? I was born in the States, yes. Yeah. But he's born in Tobago. And like I said, his family had, well, my grandmother had 14 brothers and sisters. So about half of them now are here in Port of Spain. Right. Um, so I got to spend some time with them earlier this week, and it was really nice. And yeah, the main man of the family, Stetson, is now 91 and still cooking, still climbing trees. So I also got to hang out with him, make some bakes, wild meat. Yeah. So I'm in it. I'm so ready. You, 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 you've been there already. You've done that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, have you over the years, uh, while as a professional athlete, have you been back? Have you been here to, to turn to Bigo before? I have. I came yeah. for Carnival. I played with Tribe. Um, I came once as 11 years old, and we were mostly in San Fernando at that time. Right. And then I came once as an adult and hung out with my family a little bit and did some things with Auto Bolden as well. Right, right, right. So you've been here and kind of getting getting accustomed to life here. Yeah. Well, what what, what, is, what has it been like for you, though, Lauren? Um, the influence that I think you would have had from your Caribbean roots in terms of what you what you do outside in the U.S. and, and I mean life in the U.S. So that, that, that Caribbean influence, what, what impact would it have had on you? I think it's the idea of humble beginnings and you know being able to do a lot with a little. Yeah. Um, that's something that's deeply ingrained in me. You know, having a family that had Caribbean culture, even though being raised in the states, there's all sorts of different things around you and resources and things, but being able to be efficient with what you have, uh, making it stretch and last longer, I think that's the big thing. So I was never wasteful. I was not raised to be as be such. And I think that is the big thing that kind of like stood out to me and, and the way I've been able to like maximize different areas of my life and um, reach my full potential. You have, um, you, you've been around, as I said, so you said wild meat. You, 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 you've done, you've that's eaten. humble beginning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's when you go and hunt for your food. <laughs> <laughs> and as we're eating wild meat, they, they hear something in the trees and everybody went and got the gun. And so, <laughs> I know exactly where the wild meat yeah, came yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. Your, your, your Olympic career um, has had um, its, its ups and its downs. Mm -hmm. um, you have, you've been through, uh, said, on the podium, not on the podium. That, 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 that has been a journey for you. Uh, tell, Put, if you were to put your Olympic career in a nutshell for me, two sentences. Mm, two sentences. I would just say wild ride. Uh, there's so many things that I didn't imagine would happen as a result of participating in sports. So mm -hmm. 
Um, I didn't grow up wanting to be an Olympic athlete. I wanted to just be a smart kid with a good education because that's what my parents said was the most important thing. Education, education, education. So the way that sports was able to open doors for me and take me um, through all different aspects of life, this wonderful journey, and provide the education. It provided not only the scholarship, but you know the opportunity for me to see the world and learn new different things that I would have never had the opportunity to see without sports. So. What, 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 that was more than two sentences. What, yeah, that was that was a couple more. That was a couple more. But what 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 drove you into sports? What 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 was the deciding factor for you to actually become a professional athlete? Uh, to become a professional athlete, I, I stumbled upon. So it was literally my junior year of college, uh, and my goal was simply to win the national championships for college. Mm -hmm. I had no idea about the Olympics. Still wasn't planning on. It was two thousand and four, so it was the Olympic year. But that was not on my radar at all. It was just win college nationals. And I think by way of working really hard to do that, um, I ran the second fastest time in the world. And immediately they were like, oh, this is now our fastest American this year. We got to get her. <laughs> what are you doing across there? Right. You need to be across here yeah, in be national here. colors. Exactly. <laughs> and so there was a lot coming at me really quick, a lot right. I had to figure out. And yeah. you know, you go from being 20 years old and a you know, fun college student and still kind of being a kid to you're an adult. You got to figure out these contracts and you got to understand how to hire an agent and be responsible with these funds they're giving you. So it was a lot to juggle, but um, I think it was also a really good opportunity. Yeah. Um, and, and based on your experience, Lauren, I think you, you, are, you decided to put it down in writing. Um, and that's, uh, that's sort of why you're here in mm -hmm. Trinidad Tobago, because you, you would have experienced a whole lot and you think now it's time to pass it on. Exactly. So um, now that I'm in life after sport, I'm looking back and saying, what can I do to fill the gaps that were there when I was competing? Mm -hmm. And I wrote a book called The Oval Office, and it, it does just that. Uh, it fills the gaps for those things I was just talking about that I ran into. I had no idea how to navigate it as, as 20 years old. And it gives you objective advice about what to be looking for when someone offers you a contract, um, things you can consider and you should be negotiating, um, questions to ask an agent because the, the agent's going to tell you everything he wants you to know, but what about the things that you know they might be leaving out that you need to ask to be educated? So um, choosing a coach. When you go to Europe for the first time, how do you deal with the jet lag? What's the best way to handle that? you got to eat food when you're in a another country, but what is that food going to be like? It's not your regular nutrition, so how do you kind of bridge that gap and make sure you get what you need so you're not sick on race day? Um, it is an all-encompassing of what the things um, I felt, felt like was missing and I had to figure out on my own during my career. You rattled off so many things there, <laughs> no, and, and that's, that's a reality in terms of how fast I'm supposing moving from, I suppose, uh, just a, a school athlete it's a professional athlete. So many things hit you all at once. All at once. Um, and, and the reality is that many of our athletes, I mean, I'm hearing you saying that, and I know many of our athletes personally, uh, right here in Trans Tobago, would go through exactly that. Mm. How, and, and facing, and you know that, Caribbean, Caribbean athletes, so a little shy, we, we, you know, <laughs> being well protected and, um, you know. So when we go out and face the world, it's, it's, it's an entirely different experience. It's shock, yeah, it's shock for everyone. You can imagine, I know we look back on our 20s now and say, I wasn't a grown up. You think you're an adult, you know, 18 is usually that first marker, and then in America, 21, you, you're able to drink, and those are two like milestones age group wise, but when I look back on what I knew at 20 or 21 years old, I was a kid and I needed a lot of help and I needed a lot of guidance. I needed a good support system around me. And so this is supposed to be a resource to be able to help you make those good adult decisions. It may seem like an obvious question, Lauren, but I mean, why, why it was so, it's, it's so important for you to write this book and, 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 and to pass this information? Why was it so important for you? I think the, track and, the sport of track and field has given so much to me and the Olympic movement in and of itself mm -hmm. that I had to give something back. There was no way that I could keep this information for myself. It's not useful to me anymore. Yeah. So um, for other athletes to continue on and to be suffering or to be making mistakes and not have this resource available to them, there's no reason for that anymore. So um, we just got to get it into the hands of those who need it so that they can now make better decisions and they're you know better equipped to be uh, successful in there, not just on the track, but also off the track. Yeah. What's, I mean, now you're in this phase of your career. Um, did you plan for this phase of your career? So, like, I mean, when I think injury, injury played a big role in terms of you deciding not, or just not able to continue. Yeah. Did you plan and say, okay, so after I'm finished, I'm going to do this and then that and then this? And did you plan it all like that? Uh, I wouldn't say I planned it all. I was <laughs> just like, that. <laughs> 
like that's one of the things I'm hoping that I'm going to encourage others to do yeah, because yeah. you're right I did a lot of learning as you go and, and there's still some a certain amount of planning that you can't do yeah. um, just because you don't know when the, the, the window is going to close on you but there's some preparation that I did take so I got a master's degree um, I got a certification for real estate I um, started a financial planning certification so there were things I was putting into place even though I didn't know exactly what I was going to do and plan and then from a financial standpoint you know I knew that I was going to be a little bit behind the ball as it pertains to somebody else the same age as me so I can't enter the workforce with you know zero years of experience at 30 years old where you know these people have been working since they're 21 so how was I going to be able to close that gap and so I set funds aside in order to be able to live without working for three years after I was done competing that way if I needed to take a job where you know it's an unpaid internship I could learn the tools that I needed um, so that I could get a good job in the workforce. Well, what's been? I mean, I mean, I know you've been speaking to a number of local athletes uh, in your time over the last week or so. Um, I mean, what has been the response like here in terms of you, you think people, young, young, young athletes, feeling you and understanding how important some of these things are? Yeah, they were very yeah. receptive to the information that I shared. But I think the key thing is like shifting the focus for the athletes to um, the time to prepare is now the time to prepare for the future is it's not later and you're not just an athlete I think that's the biggest the crux of this thing is that we focus so much on you know get to the podium get the medal yeah. get on top of the and it's a lot more about the journey and so that's what I talked a lot about this week and I think that um, as we continue to support and encourage the athletes we need to support and encourage them not just to be great athletes but to be great people um, and, in, and encourage them in pursuits of their things that are happening off the field of play. Do you miss it? I miss it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's an Olympic year next year. Mm. When, when that comes around. I don't around. miss it that much. No. <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes around you don't feel like oh my. I, I, Kinda, a little bit. It's like, let me go outside and do a workout. And then I finish the workout, like, oh, ooh, that hurt. Okay, <laughs> let me just go back in the kitchen. <laughs> Something nice. Don't miss it that much. No, 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 not at all. Yeah. You, you, you know, fully focus on life after. Yes. Fam it takes a while, though, to get yeah. to that point. You do. You watch them, and you're like, I could do that. I was just doing that last year. I was just doing it. And then you're like, oh, I was just doing that five years ago. Like, how can I get myself back in shape? And it is, the reality starts to set in that, yeah. you, that it's not actually going to happen where you, you're entering the field of play again. Yeah. Family life? Um, it's wonderful. Yeah, you, you, and, and kids? No kids yet. No kids yet, but yes. planning? Maybe. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of responsibility. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So. A little more than a professional career. Exactly. <laughs> I'm in charge of a human being. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I keep saying at least for 18 years, and everybody's like, "No, it's not for 18 years. For life." Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. Once you get them to adulthood, you kind of <laughs> it doesn't work like that. So. so you eat everything. I eat pretty much everything. Pretty much everything. Because I mean, I heard when 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 someone says they eat wild meat, <laughs> and I mean that that is like extreme. So that means that you're not you're not adverse to. Mm, I'm open. You're yeah. open. You're open. Exactly. Um, we're going to be doing a, a rolling out a recipe this morning. It's a nice fish. I'm doing fish. Okay. It's the Easter weekend. Um, so I'm, I'm fin I've been staying away from meat, so I've been in not doing wild meat. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> because I can't do a lot of wild meat. Um, so I'm doing a, a lovely nice fish dish that I hope you enjoy with me this morning. When we come back, we roll out a recipe. This lady, Lauren Williams, is here with me this morning. We have lots more to talk about. You're going to see her new book and uh, where it's available. She's going to talk a little bit more about that. And uh, yeah, stay with us so right here on A Cup of Joe. Lauren Williams with me this morning. Olympian with Trini Roots that I never knew about. Wow, amazing. <laughs>